Thank you for sharing your Monday night with me. This is a market update for Monday night because one of our members by, said, <laughs> indeed, Mr. Robinson said, you know what? You should talk about the market. And I said, well, I already picked my topic for Wednesday. We're talking about Kanye West and his <laughs> tax tips for us, right? But I, I have some tax tips for you and Kanye West. But, you know, and then I thought, wow, Mr. Robinson is right. And it, I don't have to wait until Wednesday. Allow our network to work to our benefit and look at us pull together, all of us, with just a mere suggestion from a member, a member on this is what we should talk about because the market is reaching new highs. Now, amazingly, well, not even, it's not amazing, but actually when you do something all day, you take it for granted. Like you really do get to the point where you're not even, um, you know, thinking like the regular person who does something else for a living would think. So that's why I need you members. That's why I appreciate Mr. Robinson saying, hey, how about talk about the stock market? And then I thank God for saying, you know what, let's do it now. Because the stock market rose strongly, serious gains for the second straight session today. And a lot of this is being pushed by the Secretary of Commerce or Commerce Secretary, Mr. Ross is saying, positive things about the U.S. and China trade deal, right? So, and, and, more, and amazingly so, I mean, just know that nothing that I'm saying applies to you. If I give you specific advice to you, make sure that I meet with you. So this is just a generic market update, and I am... A, um, a chief investment officer at a registered investment advisory firm, J.B. Bryan Financial Group, but I am not attempting to give you in specific investment advice. I got to put that out there, y'all, right? That's my live disclosure that, um, that just know that um, as a licensed professional, I am saying I am not giving you specific advice. If you want specific advice, you call me specifically. So Apple continues to hit record highs and Apple and Exxon and Chevron and their Dow components. So Dow, the Dow, the S&P and the NASDAQ are the three major indexes or indices of how the market is doing. You know, pretty much um, every time, and I would say for most of you, um, you watch the news and you hear them talk about like the um, S and P 500, or more, most more popularly probably the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You hear the news talk about it quite often, and you go, "Oh wow, the Dow is down." So that means that you know I, I lost my whole savings or my whole investments because there is a difference between saving and investing. So when we're talking about stocks that are in these indices, then we're definitely, um, we're, we're investments in an index would be stocks. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average is one of the oldest and most popular indexes in the world. It includes only 30 stocks of the largest and most influential companies in the United States of America. Yes, indeed. So when Apple, for example, does really well because of uh, information saying that the U.S. and China are going to work out this trade deal and everything, and investors see that as a good news, as good news and a strong move for the market in general, specifically companies that do a lot of business in China. So that has helped the Dow components. Yes, indeed. So the Dow reached record highs today and the um as did the s p 500 now the the s p 500 you know that like when i i was saying that about the dow representing only 30 stocks because 
only 30 stocks is an extreme for how much we depend on the Dow. Like how much fear goes into investors from what the Dow is doing is if their entire investment portfolio is only made up of those 30 stocks in the Dow. So the Dow, a very well diversified portfolio is not that does the Dow is not a well diversified portfolio. It's just an index of these 30 stocks indicating various industries. Mm, right? So the S&P 500 is broader than the Dow. So if it said, well, what's a broad market indicator, then of course the S&P 500 of the 500 top companies in the US, right? So in, in the US as well. So um, the Dow, I think, can actually contain and does contain yeah, the um, stocks outside. No, it includes 30 stocks of the most influential companies in the U.S. But um, the, and then the S&P 500, also the um, America's market indicator. So the NASDAQ, let me see if I can find out. Yep, that NASDAQ can include, now the NASDAQ is the exchange where most technology stocks are traded. Now, the NASDAQ composite index is traded on the NASDAQ stock exchange. The, and the index includes companies that are some companies that are not based in the United States. That's the one I was thinking about. So the Dow and the S&P are your US company indicators. Interesting enough, the S&P 500 index represents about 80% of the total value of the US stock market. So when you think of it as a market indicator, wow, I mean, 80%, that's, that's big. In general, the S&P 500 index is a good indicator of the movement of the US market as a whole. So you know that a, a lot of countries are looking at that. But um, we're like most popular, the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, but guess how many indices there are? I mean, like, and I guess, I mean, seriously, no one's going to really guess. Are you going to really guess? I might guess how many indexes there are. Over 5,000, you know, so there's an index <laughs> or an average for everything, like all, all of these different indicators, like, like there's, you know, indicators of just communications companies and there's um, uh, indicators for technology, for just technology stocks um, internationally or technology, you know, there's so many, yeah, over 5,000 is it's amazing. There's like over thousands now of cryptocurrencies, I think. I thought that was amazing. Like we only hear about those most popular, but there are so many of those out there. And I don't know why I thought about that when I'm thinking about indices, but that is, you know. <laughs> so back to, I want to talk. So that's the reason I want you to think about when we're talking about how well the stock market is doing and each of those market indicators are have reached new record highs. Is this, the end, is tomorrow going to be like a seriously bad day? Or is this the beginning of a nice rally forward? Or was this the best day, you know, for the next six months to have sold it? Well, we won't find, you know, we will find out tomorrow. You know, because if we look at experts or we look at um, economists or we look at just different opinion heads, you know, in addition to mine, my opinion about how the mind, which is most important. <laughs> so I will share that. My opinion about the future of our stock market is that I, I definitely feel good about the rest of this year. I feel good about 1919. I feel good about how we'll go through 2020. I realize the risk involved and I feel that it is a, a, a very good, strong market but it's only for those who have the assets appropriately allocated to the stock market. So my challenge 
what I do is make sure that the portion of my clients or members portfolio is that the portion that is appropriate based on their risk tolerance that has this exposure to the possibilities of the stock market is in alignment with their personal risk level. But you got to really know you and I have to really get to know you and understand you and understand what your goals are and where you're going. And I, I think um, just some things that I will break here because it's, it's, it's um, in, in the middle of this, just some quick tips about like investing in stocks in general. You got to make sure that you diversify. No matter how great this market is doing, you pick one stock out of this market. We can talk. I, there are some losers today. You know, there's lots of new stories today about, you know, for example, like um, um, McDonald's had a hard day. Uber's been having some hard days. Like there's, even though they came out with great earnings, they, their stock price still had a hard day. You know, those are just examples of that don't assume just because these market indicators are doing well, there could be just some extremes inside there that are doing well. That does not mean that your particular stock, that particular company that you're looking at. And I guess the greater point is, is that remember when you're doing stock investing, that you're not buying just this fictitious name, this XYZ, this stock symbol, this $1.50, um, you know, little idea, but you're actually buying a company. And if you don't understand what you're buying, do not buy it, right? So make investing a habit. Make sure you're only investing the money that is appropriate for the stock, mar the stock market based on your risk tolerance. And that can be calculated so that you know exactly what percentage of your portfolio you're comfortable with for long-term, long-term risk exposure so that you can benefit from the long-term long compounding of your investments. Get an understanding of why it's important to not buy and forget you know, you, if you have a stock portfolio, it has to be managed correctly and making sure that you understand everything that you get, that you invest into it regularly, taking advantage of things like dollar cost averaging. We've talked about these things before, just think, thinking that I should mention it and make sure that if you are positive, like I am about the short term <laughs> future of this market, but this market is made for long-term investors. The stock market is made for long-term investors. No matter how positive you feel about the short term, you know, you have to realize that stocks are long-term investments and historically they tend to do better for you if you have time for them to go through different periods of short-term volatility. Right? So consider keeping money available all the time so that you're able to take advantage of buying opportunities when the market is out of favor. And that's where dollar cost averaging really can pay off for you by consistently investing. So if you feel like uh, that the beginning of next year is strong, but by the mid year, it's not doing as well, and then by the third quarter of next year, it's even worse. By having cash available, you're able to take care of those bad market, take advantage of those bad market times. And you say take advantage of bad market times? Yes, because you want to be able to take advantage of getting good, strong companies when the price is out of favor, right? Like, you know, a thrift shop, you know, like anything else. You want to be able to buy that asset that you want to grow over time for you at the best price possible. You want to buy the best asset with the best management, best historical performance, best earnings potential, the best possible asset at the lowest price possible. 
versus just trying to buy the lowest price of something and it's not a good asset. And people do that too often. They're, oh, wow, I got such a good deal on this, you know, but you don't need it. It's not good for you. It's not, it's, you know, so that same applies to developing and putting together your investment portfolio. And then I wanted to, to talk about, oh, ETFs, exchange traded funds, ETFs. Interesting, interesting about ETFs. I want to show you this. The, um, let's see if I can share the screen. Hello, how are you doing? Michael and Valerie Murphy, that's right. The Murphys are in the house. You always be newlyweds to me. That's it, be good. Beautiful, look at this y'all. The, so my Afroeconomics portfolios are made up of ETS. Um, I do have a portfolio of individual stocks, but um, that, but the majority are, and that's like the Afroeconomics 10, where it's just, you know, bought these 10 stocks that I've picked. But the, um, my portfolios are made up of um, my allocation based on your specific risk level. Each of the portfolios have different risk levels. But exchange traded funds are traded throughout the day and they have less fees than mutual funds. So I use them because they have really, um, and they've really become extremely more popular over the years. I remember in 2008 where, you know, and talking to people and they're like, what are you talking about? ETF, exchange traded funds, give me a mutual fund or shut up. But look at this over here from 08 to 2018, 5.1 trillion trillion dollars in ETFs. It's amazing. So, you know, definitely. Um, it, so the the difference is. Wait a second. Some I'm coming back to you. Somebody asked me a question. Hey, JV. You know, some. Oh no, I don't. I wish I did know something about everything. It's so like the oh. In the Wizard of Oz, I, that's, oh, I was a whiz. I'm the whiz, right? <laughs> no, no, indeed. I, I, I tell you one thing. I know, I know, I know nothing about a lot that you know a lot about. I'm so glad I know you. Yes, indeed. Mr. Jones, um, we lost a member today, y'all, by, um, and a good friend of me, an artist. Well, actually, we lost him on Friday. Um, artists and Rashawn, I met them at the first time in the youth ministry in church. And um, artists, I don't know if you know, but we lost Rashawn Hines. And he's a, a member of Afroeconomics as well. And I met his, um, I met Rashawn and his mom um, and his dad. The Heinz family has been so good to me. I met them when I was in like middle school. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. But let's pray for our Afroeconomics family. And um, I, if you all, um, you know, make sure that you let your family members know that if anything happened to you to make sure you let your other members of Afroeconomics let us know about it. We had to um, be there for each other. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, thank you. Oh, Rashawn was such, such a fighter, such a fighter. And um, his, um, he was a graduate of Virginia State University. And just this past October, they were doing a bone marrow. They were still looking for a bone marrow donor. Mm. Thank you. Indeed. So the, um, so let's, let's um, but yeah, make, I mean, seriously, make sure you let your family members know, put it in your important documents that um, you're a member of Afroeconomics and for it to, um, to make sure that you let me know the, um, 
when um, my father passed away last year, I made sure that it was in um, his obituary or his, his information that he was one of the founding members of Afro economics, as are you all. It's still the beginning. So I still consider you all founders. We have over 300 now. So um, everybody in the first thousand are founders. How are you doing, Ms. Hill? Thank you for hanging there with me, Mr. Lewis, the Murphys, Karen, Kanika, Mr. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Hayes, Elizabeth, Ms. Kaya, Ms. Hargrove, Mr. Jones, Andrea, all of our phone calls, 301-202-804. I appreciate y'all. So back to my notes. So the exchange traded funds, you just need to know this and I will continue to talk to you about this a lot. Exchange uh, ETFs, um, ETF is the name for exchange traded funds because they're traded on the exchanges. They're traded on the New York Stock Exchange, just like a stock. So the price of your ETF, the shares that you have in that exchange traded fund will change throughout the day and they can be bought and sold throughout the day. And there's no maximum or minimum that can be traded on that unless whatever the requirements are for the specific account. But you could just buy one, two, or a hundred, or a thousand, 10,000 shares of that ETF. And that's unlike mutual funds, they're not, mutual funds aren't traded trade it on the exchange. Like you have a price for the mutual fund, but the mutual fund is traded within itself at the end of each trade day. So after four o'clock, it will tell you the price and your liquidations for that day will be done then. But with exchange traded funds, if I, I can trade it now, if it gets bought out, you know, it's gonna trade immediately. And, and basically ETFs, their ETFs are typically tracking some sort of index. Um, like they'll track, they have a ETF that models the, um, the S&P 500. Um, you may have seen commercials for the spider ETF funds and they have a spider S&P 500 that models the S&P 500. So if you want to include the S&P 500 into the portfolio, then you would buy that particular exchange traded fund. And it, um, you know, it could be an ETF that's made up of commodities, of bonds, of you know, bonds and stocks, um, stock ETFs, of course, and they can be traded so they're extremely liquid. Exchange traded funds, I became attracted to them because they allow me not to have to trade and not for the customer not to have a sales charge. So the, um, the, it doesn't have any markup on it, literally. Like the expenses might be like 0.2 or, um, you know, just extremely low um, expense ratio in the ETFs compared to a full service mutual fund with all of its expenses, typically. So, but all of that is disclosed. So when I'm showing the portfolio and I'm coming up against another portfolio that's using more expensive, fully loaded funds, typically um, no, I'm able to save a lot and increase the return. That's the goal to increase the return by reducing the expenses. And then also having full disclosure because some people are paying extreme fees on their mutual funds and they don't even know that they're paying eight seven or six percent you know on internal fees on that mutual fund that's indeed so those that's that is you know a look at um some key things that i wanted us to think about as we're listening to um the news make sure you ask me any questions you have right now <laughs> because the um it's easy it's easy for me to think, oh yeah, this, this is good, but you might have like this one, like one thing. Now, before you leave, and I wish you would um, do it on camera. I'm gonna start bringing y'all in 
I wanted to, I was like, I want, I want, I want to, but ask me anything specific that you have regarding, but stay close, make sure your portfolio is well diversified. Don't forget those tips that I was talking about. Be in it for the long term, even though the market is great. Don't get terrified about what the future is. And, you know, tomorrow you might hear a lot of news that it's like, this is the highest ever going to go. Sell, sell, sell. You know, and there's, you know, a lot of people who said that, you know, in 2008. A lot of people said that in 2000. And a lot of people said, so the key is make sure that you know your risk tolerance and that your portfolio, your investments, no matter how well the market is doing, that you only have in the stock market money that you're comfortable with losing at least a portion of it. You don't want to, that's not the place for you to be or realizing that your losses on the screen don't really represent a loss until you decide to sell it. And a gain on the screen doesn't really mean you made that money until you decide to sell it at that profit. And then we can take it even farther when you're talking about profit, you need to make sure that you understand the taxation involved in any sell. So when you start selling things, remember what is the taxation involved in this? So consider, definitely consider um, getting involved in Afroeconomics, Ms. Hayes said. Yep, Uncle Sam. Yeah, Uncle Sam. <laughs> Get involved in Afroeconomics. We have several membership levels. Go to afroeconomics.com. We have our members meetings on each Friday that are just for members. And the other meetings are um, typically available. We have a large March 2020 as we celebrate our 25th anniversary having our biggest members only meeting ever <laughs> yes indeed we might we might let some guests in but i'm trying to figure out how to do that because i want to have some fun i want to feed everybody and i want it to be free so um keep mark your calendar march 6th 7th and 8th for the 25th anniversary in Virginia. I want Mr. Jones to come. I don't care where you are. You make sure you get on that airplane and you come to Virginia. It's a salute to my 25th anniversary. <laughs> That's right. You get ready too, Elizabeth. Come on down and get that hotel room and get that set up. I'm gonna get some discount rooms too. It's gonna be at the Greater Richmond Richmond Center. So look, I went all the way from the stock market reaching record highs to March 6th, 7th, and 8th of 2020, because that's how we do. You see my um, highlighted videos on the Afroeconomics.com. Year in money moves is appropriate for this. Don't forget Wednesday night. Don't forget Wednesday night. Definitely. And then understanding uncertain economic times. So as we're celebrating, everybody's in like a celebratory time now, make sure that you're understanding how is your 401k portfolio, the 401k or the TSP or whatever you have, how are those portfolios impacted by what's going on in the stock market? How much stock market portfolio, mar stock market exposure do you have do you have enough? Are you all in the government G fund and you've never even thought about, you know, doing any other options of getting into the C or the S or the international or anything else? So get help. Talk to a financial advisor. Talk to me. Join Afroeconomics, but make sure you do something to take advantage of a, getting a greater understanding of the potential advantages of participating in the stock market. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power if we use it correctly. So may what I shared tonight empower you to move forward, to talk to me or to talk to someone, but to talk and to do. Let's get it done, right? Thank you all so much. That's a brief update on the great things going on in the market. If it's for you, make it, make it happen.
just a call away. Have a great night. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad the Murphy's hung out tonight. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Michael, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. Good night. Good night, my sister. Back to you. He's on down the road. <laughs> That's a G. Don't you carry nothing. That might be a load. That's right. He's on down. Down the road. I say. Is that how you say it, Mr. Jones? I say. Amen. Hashtag Rashawn. I say. To a life well lived. To a life well lived. Let's make sure we represent. Ashe. All right. <laughs> Ashe. That's right. Teach me right. The student teaches the teacher. Yes, indeed. I'm proud of you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful week. Ashe from Mr. Jones and J.B. Bryant Financial Group. <laughs> the home of Afro-Economics.